This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Last example, example um, three. P acquired 55% of S on the 1st of June 2008. The income statements for the year ended May 2009 are as follows. So there are your income statements. And again, both companies produce their own income statement. They both include all their sales and all their costs. During the year, P sold goods, sorry, start again, S sold goods to P for 28000 Now, will you listen carefully, because there are two problems. Hello. Sorry, I wasn't speaking to anyone in particular. Problem number one, during the year, S sold goods to P for 28 do you all agree, therefore, that S's revenue will include 28,000, which was within the group? Would you all agree that P's costs will include 28,000, that in fact was within the group? Forget the rest of that line. Do you all agree with that statement? And so... When I come to do the income statement, I think that's easily dealt with. The consolidated income statement, the revenue, 120 in P, 110 in S, but S is included 28, which wasn't outside the group, take off the 28. Check me, but I think 202,000. They were the sales outside the group. Is that clear? The cost of sales... Add up 55 in P, 50 in S. But... Included in P's purchases will have been the 28 they were charged by S. Would you agree? Hello? So, take off the 28. Now, don't add up yet, but take off the 28. Don't add up yet. <laughs> Liga. Yeah. Now then, this is the bit to listen to carefully, if you would. If that was the only problem, then we'd finish. We'd add up, add up everything else. And would you all agree with me? Nobody seems to be listening. Would you all agree with me that if we did add up and finish the total profit would end up no different. All I've done is remove 28 from revenue, 28 from cost. You'd end up with the same profit, yeah? Hello? You'd end up with the same profit. And no problem at all. It's simply that, clearly, we want to show sales outside the group, costs outside the group. And so that's easy. Whatever the intergroup sales are, they come out of revenue, they come out of cost. And if all the goods had been sold, that would be the end of the story. But completely separately, look back to the question. Completely separately, it tells us one quarter of these goods remain in inventory. Now, did we not say when we did the balance sheet... That if any of those goods are in inventory, then we're recording profit, which needs taking out. Do you remember? Can you all work out for me? 
How much unrealised profit is there? How much profit is there in inventory? Is that right? I think it is. Again, it's simply whether you use X's or not. Uh, but remember, I'm only concerned with any profit left in inventory. A quarter of the goods, so 7,000 selling price, are still in inventory. The profit, you can check my X's, I shouldn't need to talk through it, but the profit there is 2,000. You look worried, Inessa. I don't get it. Um, you're happy about the idea of if it costs X, the profit's 40%, the total's 140%. percent you happy about that idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah? It does tell us the total sales S to P were 28. Mm -hmm. But it says one quarter of them were still in inventory. Mm -hmm. The rest of them were sold. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said earlier... If they've been sold outside, you know, the profit's been made. So we're only worried about those that are still left that haven't been sold. You've got it now, have you, Innocent? Mm -hmm. Has everybody got it? The 7,000, certain inventory, there's a profit of two. All right, now, can you all listen, please? It's this last bit that upsets a lot. It's easy arithmetic, but it upsets many people. Is everybody clear about the number, 2,000? What did we say when we did the balance sheet? We said, without me repeating all the reasons, we said on the balance sheet we needed to reduce inventory by 2,000. Agreed? Not relevant here because we're not doing a balance sheet. But we also said, because we haven't actually yet made the profit outside... We need to reduce our retained earnings, our profits, by two. Yep. How are we going to do it? You agreed with me a moment ago that at the moment I'm not reducing profit at all. Because the inter-sales were 28, I took 28 off revenue, 28 off costs. That doesn't actually change the profit do you agree? You all did a minute ago. Do you still agree? Mm -hmm. But we've now said, ah, we need the profit to be 2,000 lower because of this unrealised. The way we do it is this. How can I make the profit lower? We add it to the cost of sales. The unrealised profit... If I add 2,000 to the cost of sales, would you agree it will make the profit 2,000 less? Which is what we want. And so now it's easy. 55, 50 minus 28 plus 2. Is it 79,000? I'll finish off, but the rest of it is simply adding or subtracting. And because I'm doing it in a hurry, I'll probably make a mistake. Profit 70. 
All right? Now, it's actually a slightly hard one for them to examine because, of course, they're not going to ask you for a full income statement. And in a sense, it proves itself. You see, the total profit adding together, if you didn't have this problem, the total profit would have been 36, 36, 72,000. You agree? We already know that we need to reduce retained earnings by two. We knew from the balance sheet exercises earlier. Well, we've ended up with profit 2,000 less. That you can test. It's a bit hard for him to test where it affects it. But the way we made it 2,000 less, you add it to your cost of sales. By increasing cost of sales by two, the profit's down by two. Okay? I hope you're clear. And can I just say finally, what I shouldn't need to say, but I'm going to. This is only necessary if there's some of it left in inventory. If there was none left in inventory, you wouldn't need to adjust. It's only the profit on anything left in the inventory. Okay? All right, well, that's effectively everything. I want to make a, a couple of comments after uh, lunch, but as far as numbers are concerned, that's it. I am late and I apologise. We'll carry on in one hour. But as I say, for numbers, we've, well, that's everything. Okay? Although we have effectively done, done all the numbers now, I'd just better mention quickly, that last example we did, if you just look back at it, example three on page 164, all right? I think you were all clear. Essentially, your income statement, essentially, you're just adding up everything. The only... Complication, if that's the right word, you can have at F3. It's those two appreciate separate problems. Do be clear, they are two separate things. Any sales between the companies, whatever you've sold during the year, remove it from sales. And because whatever one sold to the other was the purchase of the other, remove it from purchases. You, are, you were all clear. Sorry repeating. But just because of the f one final thing I want to mention. So that you would always do if they were into sales. But the other one, completely separate. If and only if there's any uh, of those goods left in inventory. Then whatever's in inventory, we need to remove the unrealised profit. We do it by increasing cost of sales. Okay? So that was a straight repeat, but you, you remember it. The one thing I'd better mention, just to be safe, is if you remember with the previous ones, once you've got your profit, the total here is 70,000, we are required to show who, who owns it. So who's that profit attributable to? So I'd better just write down to be safe, who, you know what I mean, who owns that 70? Well, always, part of it's owned to shareholders of the parent company, part of it to the non-controlling interest. And this is really why I said, don't waste time checking. We work out how much is owed to the non-controlling interest. The rest of it is owed to shareholders in the parent. How much is owed to the non-controlling interest? First of all, the non-controlling interest, <coughs> we have 55%. They own 45%. Everybody found it? Oh, anybody found it? Yes. You all agree? Yes, sir? Yeah. Um, they're entitled to 40% of uh, their company's profits. Well, how much profit did S make this year? S made 36,000. 
Do you agree? Normally, that would be the end of it. But, do remember, we've had this unrealised profit of, was it 2000? You take it off, whichever company had done the selling and therefore had got the profit, if you see my point. Well, here... S have been selling to P. Although P's the one with the inventory, it's S who's taken all the profit on all the sales. Do you agree? Hello? S has taken all the profit. Well, they can't take, for consolidated, we can't have the profit on the unrealised, on the unsold inventory. Take out the 2,000. For consolidation purposes... Their profit is 34, and therefore the non controlling interest are entitled to 45% of 34,000, I think 15,3. And the rest of it, the missing figure, is owed to shareholders of the parent. So the missing figure is 50, you better check me, I think 54,700. And you see again, you can check that, but it's that little bit more work. There's absolutely no need. Non-controlling is the easy one. <clears throat> Just remember, if they've been selling goods and there's any left in inventory, then we've then realised profit. Okay.